Hello, it's time for the Jump Ministry message of the day. Please get your Bibles, get ready to open them up. Today we'll be in the epistle of First John. Now you figure out which one that is as we continue our series on priorities. Hi there. Well, we just got done saying bless you to each other. We came outside on this beautiful day and it's clouds in the sky, but the breeze is blowing. And we were sitting out here talking to each other, and I was getting ready for the incredible devotion. And a big bunch of pollen came across. I guess it blew out of the trees or something. So he started sneezing, I started sneezing. Yeah, I sneezed. He sneezed a lot. So we were out here going, bless you. Bless you. And bless you. Bless you. Bless you. Bless you. All right, that's enough. But we went back and forth sneezing, and here we are. So that got me to thinking about this particular devotion. It's called Bloom Where You're Planted. How's that for a Monday, huh? Bloom where you're planted. Can you see okay? Yeah. Okay. The Bible says in Philippians chapter 4, verses 12 and 13, I have learned the secret of being happy at any time in everything that happens. I can do all things through Christ because he gives me strength. I'm not sure what translation that is, but it's pretty good. I like that version. You know this? Plants need just a few things to grow. Sunlight, like we have today. Look at Corey's face getting all bright. Come on back in here, man. We're under an umbrella. Sunlight, water, we've had a lot of that lately, haven't we? We're going to get more today. Air and nutrients. Some plants, like trees and grass, get what they need in a pretty simple way. Dirt gives them their nutrients. Rain gives them their water. And plants find sunlight and air all around them. So that works for trees and grass. Hmm. But God made other plants to be a little more creative. A little more creative to get what they need. Now listen to this. I didn't know this. For example, some desert plants have very long roots allowing them to sort of dig for underground water. Many desert plants, like cacti, are able to store water from rare desert rainfalls. Hmm. How about in the rainforest, where they get lots of rain? What do those plants do? Some places in the rainforest have more than 100 inches of rain every year. Plants have drip tips that quickly send all that extra water dripping away so their leaves don't get moldy. That is amazing. Isn't God incredible how he thought to do that? Look at this. How about plants that grow in the Arctic? That's a really cold place. You know how they grow? They grow low to the ground and close together to survive the bitter cold. Can you imagine that? Plants cuddling up together to stay warm. That's kind of silly, but it's kind of what they're doing. God also created you to bloom where you're planted. No matter where you are and no matter what's happening around you. How? By depending on Jesus and being thankful for all he's given you. If you're having the absolute best day ever, like today, aren't we having a good day? It's so pretty out here. If you're having the best day ever, it's easy to bloom with happiness and thanksgiving. When you're having the worst day ever, it's a bit tougher, isn't it? Ooh. But you can always be thankful for Jesus on days that are good and days that aren't so good. Listen to this. Put your roots deeply into his love. Let God's word, the Bible, feed you and reach out to the world around you. Before you know it, you'll be blooming right where you're planted. Isn't that fun? That's pretty neat. We can say, Lord, no matter what's happening in my day today, I know I have many things to be thankful for. Lord, please open my eyes to see them and help me bloom wherever you plant me. You know, right now I'm talking to you. And like three years ago, I didn't even know you. And if we have visitors on here, what I mean by that is I'm pretty new to the church where I am right now. And I never saw God planting me there, but he sure has. And I'm loving it, and I'm thanking him for it all the time. Because I knew about the church. I knew Pastor Fred a long time before I came to you all. But I never knew I'd be working there as a pastor and serving there as a pastor. It's just so amazing what God does. So you all just wait on his plan. He has a plan for you. And when you get there, thank him. And you just bloom wherever he puts you. You hear me? Okay, here's an amazing fact. Did you know that fire is the enemy of most all plants? You get a plant around fire, it wilts right up. How do I know that? Because I've had some fires out back that have gotten kind of big, 
and then I look up at the tree and the leaves are wilted. So I don't do that anymore. Fire can be an enemy to plants, but did you know God designed a certain kind of plant to actually work with fire? Because think about this. I'm not talking about man-made fires now where we go out and we forget to put a campfire out. You know, that's dangerous, isn't it? I'm talking about when lightning strikes and a fire starts. You may have heard this term, wildfire. That's what I'm talking about now. God designed some trees to work with wildfire. Listen to this. There is a particular tree called a jack pine tree. And its scientific name is, I'm going to blow this, Pinus banksiana. The tree's seeds are stuck together in a resin-filled cone. You know what a pine cone looks like. We'll picture it all closed up before it opens up. And it's got this stuff called resin. And resin is really, really sticky. And it smells really, really strong of pine. Well, listen to this. Since the resin is so strong, the cones can say, stay sealed up for a bunch of years until a forest fire or a wildfire sweeps through where they're growing. And the tree itself might catch on fire, but all those cones that were glued shut with resin, guess what happens? The fire loosens up that resin and it actually allows the seeds inside the pine cone to go in the ground. And listen, the cones open, spill out their seeds, and this is God's miraculous design to replant the forest after a fire. It's amazing. I've seen pine cones, and I've never thought about that before. We don't live in an area that has that particular jack pine tree, but we have conifers, we have pine trees that have pine cones on them, and I'm imagining one of those being near a fire, and all of a sudden it opens up, and its seeds fall on the ground, and you might think, well, that tree's dead. It's gone. It's all black, and you've seen pictures on the news. Maybe you haven't, but you will someday, where whole sides of mountains are burned. And then you'll see a picture three years later, and they're all green again. Now, the trees aren't very tall, but the, the seeds waited for the fire to go out, and once the ground cooled and those seeds were in the ground and it rained, they sprout up into little pine trees. Isn't that amazing, Corey? Yeah! It's just so cool how God designed things. So you bloom right where he put you. Okay, today we're going to continue our series on priorities. Yesterday we talked about decisions. In a moment we'll come back and we'll talk about priorities. Oh, not being like the world. I don't want to give you too many hints because then you'll already know what I'm talking about and you'll go away. So it'll be real short and I hope it'll be real interesting. See you in a few minutes. Bye. Our jump message of the day is talking about priorities. I spoke to you and I introduced this series to you yesterday morning and we talked about decisions. Remember how Levi made a decision to follow Jesus as soon as Jesus said, come on, follow me. He made a decision and I ask you, what kind of decisions are you making? What kind of priorities are you making? We're in day two now. We're going to continue talking about priorities, but our topic switches a little bit. How followers of Jesus are supposed to be different from the world. That's what we're going to talk about today for a few minutes. So grab your Bibles, open them up to the epistle of 1 John. The epistle of 1 John. Not John, the gospel. The epistle. 1 John, 2 John, 3 John. Remember? It's towards the back of the New Testament. Chapter 2. Verses 15, probably 16 and 17. Won't spend a whole bunch of time on this, but I will ask you some questions. What does it mean that we're supposed to be different than the world? Well, the Bible tells us right here. Do not love the world or the things in the world. If anyone loves the world, the love of the Father is not in him. For everything in the world, the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, and the pride in one's possessions is not from the Father but is from the world. And the world with its lust is passing away, but the one who does the will of God remains forever. Three verses I cannot think of a more powerful message contained in three little sentences or three little scripture passages. I think today I want to take it apart a little bit. You're old enough to understand some of what I'm talking about. We're warned here to not be of the world or be worldly. Let me share something that might make, might make a little sense to you. A boat. 
A boat belongs on the water. But does the water belong in the boat? Not necessarily, no. Absolutely, if you have too much water in the boat, what's the boat going to do? The boat's not going to be on the water. The boat's going to be in the water, under the water. It'll sink. So think about this in these verses where it says, Do not love the world or the things in the world. If everyone loves the world, the love of the Father is not in him. What this is talking about is when you love something so much, or you you might think you love it, the actual word in there, it, it's, it's a different word in the Greek. It, it's... I don't want to get too much into that, but it means that's all you can think about. Whatever it is. Like it's a new video game. It's a new song. It's a new boy or a new girl. And that's all you can think about. And you're not thinking about God. That's when we're becoming worldly. We need to be very careful about this. There's a, a, a picture in my mind that comes to me. And it's, it's a snowball when you're making a snowman. And why am I talking about this on this beautiful sunny day? Because I am. You start with a little ball and you roll it in the snow and it gets bigger and bigger and bigger until you got a big snowball and you use that for the bottom. You go bloomp. And I happen to look up where I have Olaf, the box for Olaf, and that's what came to mind. And you take another one, you roll it till it gets a little bit smaller than the first one, and you go bloop. Now you got two balls on top of each other, and you do the third for a head, and you get some coal and a carrot and a little pipe if he's a smoker. But since we're in days when we're not supposed to be doing things like that, you just put a, I don't know, a lollipop in his mouth or something. You put a hat on him and a scarf, and you got yourself a snowman. Did you know that becoming worldly can be something like that little snowball that you start rolling. It looks innocent. It's just a little snowball, but it gets bigger and bigger and bigger. Now I'm talking about something that you're getting into, and it's getting bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger, and all of a sudden you're not thinking about God at all because you can't see God because whatever it is is so big, you've become worldly. But don't, don't despair yet. But I do want to talk to you about some of the words it says in here, lust of the flesh, lust of the eyes, and the pride in one's possessions or the pride in life, whatever your Bible might say. You know something? This is not a new problem. We have been fighting this problem. I say we. I'm talking about mankind. We've been fighting this problem ever since God made man and woman. Their names were Adam and Eve, and they were placed in a garden. Check it out. I think it starts in Genesis chapter 3, verse 6. It's somewhere in there. I'll turn there and see if I told you the right verse. I think so. Hang on. You can come there with me if you want. Genesis chapter 3, verse 6. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. If you want to, back up to verse 1 of chapter 3 in Genesis. And this is when we're introduced to a, a slimy character. His name's Satan. Now the serpent was more cunning of all the wild animals that the Lord God had made. He said to the woman, Did God really say you can't eat from any tree in the garden? The woman said to the serpent, We may eat the fruit from the trees in the garden, but about the fruit of the tree in the middle of the garden, God said, you must not eat it or touch it or you will die. Nah, you will not die, the serpent said to the woman. In fact, God knows that when you eat it, your eyes will be open and you'll be like God, knowing good and evil. Listen to me. Oh, I hope you're listening and you didn't just look back at the TV. Verse 6, the woman saw the tree was good for food and delightful to look at, and that it was desirable for obtaining wisdom. So she took some of its fruit and ate it. She also gave some to her husband who was with her, and he ate it. Isn't that the three things I just said from the epistle of John chapter 2? The lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, and pride in one's possession or the pride in life. Don't you see all three of these started at the beginning of time? What do you mean? Okay, here's what I'm talking about. The lust of the flesh. Verse 6. The woman saw that the tree was good for food. She's just thinking about herself and her stomach. Lust of the flesh. Okay. And delightful to look at. Lust of the eyes. When you're lusting something, I gotta have it. I gotta have it. That can be a toy. It can be a person. It can be whatever. I gotta have it. That's lust. And pride in one's accomplishments or one's belongings or, or pride in life. Look, she saw it was, what was it? She saw the tree was good for food, delightful to look at, and it was desirable for obtaining wisdom. I gotta have it. 
The devil said, I'll be just like God, and I'll know good and evil. I'll be just like God. Got to have it. Got to have it. All three of those. Worldliness started right in the beginning of time. What a mess people made of things. God put us down here to serve him and glorify him and to be his friend, and we blew it. Someone's saying, I'm only 11 years old. I didn't blow it. I wasn't around back then. You were born, weren't you? Well, you were born with the same baggage that our original parents had. It's called sin. But uh, there's something cool in here. Please don't turn this off yet. We're almost done, but not quite yet. Come back with me to the epistle of John. Because there's something in there that gives me hope every day. Let me turn back in here. Oh, I made so many notes in my Bible this weekend. Pastor preached so neat on Sunday. I loved it. And I was scribbling down as fast as I could. Listen to this. Uh-oh, I turned too far. 1 John chapter 2. Here it is. And the world with its lust is passing away, but the one who does the will of God remains forever. Why is it so important that we don't become worldly? What's another example of worldliness? Well, how about... Okay, I'll, I'll, I'll try to do something you might understand a little bit more. Because you may not understand about Adam and Eve and eating fruit and what was so wrong with that. What if two people were getting married? A young man and a young woman were making plans to get married. And they were talking about their wedding and everything. And he said, okay, honey, I really want to marry you. And she said, okay, but there's something i got to tell you first. Um, I'll marry you. And I'll move in with you. We'll live together and I'll serve with you, and we'll, we'll raise a family, but you got to know something. There's someone else I love, so I'm still going to love this guy, even though I'll marry you, but I'm still going to love him, and I'm going to hang out with him too. Wait a minute, isn't that silly? Would the man want to marry her then if she was not going to commit to him? You know that she's just saying, no, I, I want to have both of you all, okay? No, I don't think so. That is all twisted up and messed up. No. That, maybe that wasn't the best example of worldliness, but it's certainly the lust of the eyes. He's so cute. I want him too. No, God's saying you can't have me as your God, or you're saying you're a Christian. You can't follow me and still want to be in the world because Jesus doesn't play second fiddle. Jesus is not going to take second seat while you go do whatever you want to do and then come running back and saying, well, Jesus, I love you too, but I want to love all this too. No, you got to make a choice. You can be worldly and go chase the world and all it has to offer, but this scripture said the lust of the world, that's all fading away. That's all going to be gone someday. But the one who remains, what does it say? But the one who does the will of God remains forever. If you've accepted Jesus as your Lord and Savior, do you realize you're never going to die? Yeah, your body's going to stop working. Yeah, you're going to get old and broken down like me. And, but your soul and your eternal life is with Jesus in heaven. So all this stuff down here, while it's beautiful, and yes, it's okay to want some things and to enjoy some things, but as I told you yesterday, you got to make some decisions all right, what's more important? What is your priority? Is your priority a bunch of stuff? Or is your priority learning more about the God that created you and his son, Jesus, who offers salvation to you? And all you got to do is say, come into my life, Jesus. It's not difficult. Old people get it all mixed up and we make it all hard and all these rules and everything. Jesus said, you believe in me and you're saved. And once you do this, once you're saved, then your life begins to change. All right, we can talk more about that another time, but I want you to know that you've got to make some priorities, make some choices right now in your young lives. What is important to you? Is that video game really going to be that important? And a couple months from now, when you run it over with the vacuum cleaner and it's broken, you know, was it really worth all this and missing church and, and not reading your Bible? Was it really worth it? Really? I can't answer that. But I can tell you this, based on what I just read in my Bible, all this stuff, one day it's going to be gone. Here today, gone tomorrow. Not God. Not the love of Jesus. Once you embrace that, that's with you forever. Did I make myself clear? Forever.
Well, I even shook my head, got a little attitude in there. All right, y'all do what you want to do. It's a Monday. It's a beautiful day. I hope you're being good. I hope you read your Bible. We need a new memory verse. Ask mom or dad, or if you're allowed to type on your little computer thingy or tablet or whatever, send me a memory verse that you think we could go over together. Because I always choose them, and maybe you don't like the ones I choose. So y'all pick one. Challenge me. And if it's more than four or five words, then you're really challenging me. But, hey, I'm calling you out right now. You all pick a memory verse, challenge me, and I'll spend the rest of the week learning it. Oh, boy. I love you. Let's close in prayer. Heavenly Father, please help us make decisions. Please help us get our priorities straight and, and decide it's either the world or it's you. Help us be like Levi and other people who Jesus called and said, follow me. And immediately they did. Thank you for the opportunity to follow you, Lord. Please bless our families and our friends with health and protect us from this virus that's still raging all around us. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Love y'all. Have a great day. Hey, did you check out the Jesus hat? Check this out, guys. Woo, there's a face. I got this a long, long time ago, and I got it all greasy working on my truck, and so I had thrown it in a box. Guess what? I put it in the washing machine, and it almost looks brand new. I give God thanks for Tide detergent. See you later. Bye-bye. Well, thank you for spending time with us today. This has been the Jump Ministry Daily Devotional Message. If your children have any questions, they can email Pastor Bill at jumpministry at mac.com and my phone number is in the membership directory. This has been Jump Ministry from the Church at St. Charles. Have a great day.